You're listening to Catholic Sprouts, the daily podcast for Catholic kids that strives to plant seeds of faith. Greetings, young Squire Sprouts. Today is the 23rd day in the seventh month in the year of our Lord, 2022. My name is Sir Roland Paterlot, and you're listening to Saturdays with Sir Roland on Catholic Sprouts, where every Saturday we discuss the art of dragon slaying. Today, I'd like to begin a very important series on commandments. What do you think of when you hear the word commandment? It kind of sounds harsh, doesn't it? Like a strict rule you have to follow or else you're going to get punished. We tend not to like rules to follow. Perhaps your parents give you certain rules. Maybe you have to go to bed at a certain time, or you have to do your homework before you can play any games, or you have to clean up your own mess, or maybe you have to make your bed, or clean your room, or wash the dishes, or do certain chores, or maybe you're not allowed to put duct tape over your brother's mouth, or pull the arms and legs off your sister's dolls, or you can't start fires in the living room, you know, stuff like that. Why do you think your parents give you so many rules or commandments? Do you think they're just trying to be mean or selfish or make you jump through a bunch of hoops because they have all the power? Maybe if you ask your dad if you can have some ice cream and he says no, do you automatically think, well, he just wants to eat all the ice cream himself? I think deep down you understand that your parents give you rules to follow because they love you. And dragons are everywhere trying to trip you up. Many times on this podcast, we've talked about concupiscence, that effect of original sin in which we struggle to do what is right. We desire things that aren't good for us. Dragons can look so attractive, so alluring, so tempting, and disguise themselves so well as something good that we need a game plan to fight against them. We just finished our summer series on sports, and we learned some great virtues that can help us to fight against dragons. But it's pretty hard to fight against something that you don't know anything about. I mentioned that I ran track and I played hockey, but I also played basketball and football. In football, I actually got a lot of playing time when I was just a freshman on our state championship football team. Yeah, I was the skinny kid that ran out onto the field and picked up the tee after we kicked off. And since our team was good and scored a lot of touchdowns, we kicked off a lot, so I was always running out there. And we had a Hall of Fame football coach. And do you know what Hall of Fame coaches do? They make you watch a lot of game film. Why? For two reasons. If you watch yourself on film, you can catch all the mistakes you're making. You get to know yourself really well and all your tendencies. And if you can figure out your weaknesses, you can turn them into strengths. You can make certain rules to follow and guide you, like maybe make sure you block the right person, or don't stop until you hear the whistle, or perform your specific task on every play really well to help your team win. But we didn't just watch film on ourselves, we also watched a lot of film on the other team that we were about to play. We wanted to know everything about the other team. Because we figured if we study them and what kind of offense and defense they have and what their tendencies are, we can capitalize on their weaknesses and overcome their strengths. Well, life is kind of like that game. It's a battle. There's an opponent. There's dragons everywhere. So we must have rules to guide us, to overcome our weaknesses, to defeat our opponents, the dragons. If we want to win, there's certain things we must avoid doing and certain things we must do really well. God is a great coach and a great parent. He loves us. And because he loves us, he gave us the game film on life. He teaches us our weaknesses. He teaches us the battle strategy and tells us to watch the game film of Satan, the first dragon, in Genesis chapter 3. And he gave us commandments to follow. In the Old Testament, he gave us ten specific commandments. Perhaps you remember the story of Moses and how he received these commandments from God to share with all the people. The purpose of these commandments is not to make us jump through hoops or make us miserable or make us slaves. The purpose is actually to set us free. Remember, the Israelites received these Ten Commandments from God right after he set them free from 400 years of slavery in Egypt. Dragons enslave us spiritually. Just like when people break the law, they go to jail. When we break God's law, we spiritually go to jail, and we can't get out by ourselves. Sin enslaves us. But Jesus has the key to our prison cell. He paid our bail. He gives us grace. He opens the prison cell door. He teaches us the way out. But we must do our part. We can't get comfortable in our prison cell. We must come out and avoid going back in. We have to stop falling for the lies of the dragons. 
we must follow God's commandments to set us free and to keep us free. So over the next 10 weeks, we're going to go through each of the 10 commandments in a new and unique way. We're going to use Sir Wyvern Pugilist's Dragon Slayer's Manual to match up which dragons like to try to make you break each of the Ten Commandments. We're going to study our weaknesses and make them strengths. We'll study the dragons so we, we can be on guard and slay them. And we'll become bona fide dragon slayers. So this week, I want you to simply read two chapters in the Bible to help you prepare. First, read Genesis chapter 3. This is the game film of the original dragon, Satan. And you can see his strategy on how he tempts, deceives, and lies to Adam and Eve to pull them away from God's life and love by tricking them into breaking God's commandment. Then, read Exodus chapter 20, which contains the Ten Commandments. You'll notice that three of the commandments are proactive swords, things that we can do to fight back. They start with things like, love God, or keep holy the Sabbath, or honor your parents. The other seven commandments are shields. They're things to avoid doing and guard against. They start with either don't or thou shalt not, depending on your translation. And then next week, we're going to dive into the first and greatest commandment. So until next week, I'll leave you to the protection of St. Michael the Great Archangel, St. Joseph the Terror of Dragons, and Mary, Queen of the Angels, Our Lady of Grace, and the woman whose seed crushed the head of the dragon. That's it for Catholic Sprouts today. We'll be back tomorrow. But until then, continue to grow in your faith and truly sprout into the beautiful creation that God created you to be. Hey, parents and kids. We're excited to start this series on the Ten Commandments. Our resource of the week for our Dragon Slayers Training Guild is our new and improved Dragon Slayers Examination of Conscience free download which contains the Ten Commandments and the dragons we're going to be learning about in the coming weeks. We do also recommend you get your copy of Sir Wyvern's Dragon Slayer's Manual if you don't already have it at dragonslayersbook.com. The Training Guild email will also include a link to our recommended resource for learning the whole story of salvation for families. If you're not already a member of our Training Guild and would like to receive these resources, you can register anytime for free at extraordinarymission.com slash dragonslayers. And remember, listen to Catholic Sprouts every day including Saturdays with Sir Roland. This show is a production of the Spoke Street Media Podcast Network. For more great podcasts, visit Spokestreet.com.